In modern society, any terrorist activity, physical violence against people is absolutely unacceptable and prosecuted in accordance with the law. However, right from the beginning of the last century, terror was a part of the politics of left-wing radical parties, especially when they seized power, as terror and violence became the main means of struggle against their political opponents. The measures of violence applied by the Russian Bolsheviks against various social groups that were declared class enemies or accused of organizing counter-revolutionary activities were called the Red Terror. When the Russian Revolution began and Vladimir Lenin arrived in Russia, the issue arose of seizing power and the development of revolutionary events. During 1917, there was justification of certain provisions. How would administrative functions be carried out? How would the power of the Soviets be exercised? How would relations between different social groups form? When the Bolshevik Revolution took place in October 1917, the question arose, how is power to be retained? The main goal and the main means of retaining power was social change in society, which was supposed to entail the destruction of socially hostile class elements. Lenin substantiated the thesis that terror should be carried out against class hostile elements. Why did the term red terror appear? In order to justify social killings and methods of social engineering for the destruction of class enemies. Accordingly, the Bolsheviks said that the whites had started white terror and red terror became the answer to this white terror. In fact, the terror, which later received the name red terror, was the other side of the Bolshevik regime. The slogans, all power to the Soviets, land to the peasants, factories to the workers, peace and the end of the war, were the main tool for ensuring this terror. The terror was aimed against those social groups that were considered an obstacle in the construction of the Bolshevik communist regime. The Council of People's Commissars legitimized violent actions by issuing the decree on Red Terror. It ordered the liberation of the Soviet Republic from class enemies by isolating them in concentration camps, as well as the physical destruction of all those involved in the White Guard organizations, conspiracies and rebellions. Russian historiography confines Red Terror to the period of the Civil War of 1917-1923 only on the territory of Soviet Russia. According to Ukrainian scientists, the Bolshevik authorities also acted on the territory of Ukraine and the Red Terror here continued until the death of Joseph Stalin in 1953. Ukrainian historiography mentions these boundaries until 1953, because terror was carried out constantly throughout the social experiment. Terror did not cease in 1921, it merely changed its form. It continued throughout the 1920s, and the events from 1928 to 1939 are mass terror, which reached its peak in 1938 to 1939. This phase of terror in Ukraine began in 1928. The famous Shakti trial and the fight against the former industrial intelligentsia engineers. Furthermore, this phase is associated with the first purge of the Ukrainian intelligentsia, especially those who took part in the events of 1917 to 1921. This case is connected with Efremov and the Union for the Liberation of Ukraine. And then this is terror that was directed against the Ukrainian peasantry. The Holodomor took place in 1932 to 1933. It was the manifestation of terror which took 8 million lives. The same genocide of the Crimean Tatars can be attributed to the manifestation of Red Terror in relation to the whole population, the same the eviction of Bulgarians, Greeks and Germans. The methods of Red Terror were used again in January 1918, when Red Army troops broke into Kyiv and staged a massacre here. According to various estimates, about 300 people became victims of the Bolsheviks. Punitive actions took place in Crimea in the winter of 1917-1918. An illustrative example is Crimea and the events associated with the destruction of officers of the Black Sea Navy. When officers were drowned in ships, when officers were killed and officers' wives were killed with their entire families, 
This took place when the Bolsheviks captured power in Crimea for the first time. The terror was very cruel and the leader of the Crimean Tatars, Chelebi Jihan, was killed. During the terror, more than 1,000 famous revolutionaries of Crimea were repressed. Those who opposed the Bolsheviks and took a pro-Ukrainian position and supported the Central Rada, which opposed the Bolsheviks. Those Crimean Tatars who supported the creation of a regional Crimean Tatar autonomous region were simply shot. This terror caused strong hatred by the local population on the peninsula of the Bolshevik authorities in Crimea. During the period of 1917 to 1920, the Bolshevik government entered Ukraine several times and entered with great military power and large punitive expeditions. In Ukraine, the decree on the Red Terror of September 5, 1918 was not immediately implemented, as it was a part of the Ukrainian state headed by Hetman Pavlo Skoropatsky. At that time, there were no Bolshevik troops on the territory of Ukraine. In Ukraine, the implementation of the provisions of this decree was only carried out from December 1918. The All-Ukrainian Emergency Commission was established in Kharkiv, that is the analog of the All-Russian one. An emergency commission is a special body, an emergency commission to combat banditry, speculation, sabotage. It was created in order to fight our national movement, and they had their own detailed structure right down to local level, a separate one from the railways, another for the fronts. In the course of January or February 1919, most of the territory of Ukraine was occupied by the Red Army. From that moment on, violence and terror became the main methods of a certain Soviet power here. These were arrests of representatives of the local bourgeoisie, bank employees, owners of industrial enterprises representatives of liberal, democratic, constitutional, monarchist parties, representatives of the intelligentsia. It was a kind of social selection for class conformity by origin, place of work and belonging to a certain social class. Thus, elements that could probably be hostile to Soviet power were identified or they carried out preventive arrests in order to intimidate, destroy morally or to simply murder people. As a rule, demonstrative murders were carried out in order to intimidate the population so that there were no demonstrations against the power of the ruling party. Such demonstrative murders took place in Kharkiv, Odessa, Vinnytsia, Zhitomyr and other cities around Ukraine. As for the rural population, this decree was implemented through a surplus, when food was forcibly taken from peasants. In exchange, they were to receive manufactured goods, in order to provide the city with food. But due to the fact that the peasants did not want to give their goods in vain, there were coups against the Bolsheviks, bread was hidden away, and so on. Representatives of the Bolshevik authorities in rural areas carried out the destruction of socially hostile elements, the prosperous rural population and the landowners. It was mostly killing and use of preventive remedies. Another form of terror that was applied to the Ukrainian peasantry was the burning of villages, where there were manifestations of anti-Soviet and anti-Bolshevik uprisings. The Bolsheviks used a system of collective responsibility via the taking of hostages to fight against well-off peasants called kulaks. They appointed so-called defendants, took one person out of 30 houses, and in the event of disobedience by anyone, they would be shot. The attacks on the peasantry by the Bolshevik authorities forced them to leave their homes and unite into large military groups to protect their interests. If it was not possible to suppress these uprisings by using weapons, Soviet Cheka officers used outright provocations. Amnesty is a provocation. They sent their own officers, used fake people, 
falsified correspondence, fake letters were disseminated. Let's say they come to a village, hand out leaflets, get ready for an uprising, Petlura or Tutunik are already close, and they watch, keep watching. This one, that one and another have already grouped together, they've gone into the barns to dig something out, so this one and another are detained, arrested, taken away. The actions of the Bolsheviks in Ukraine were particularly cruel. People were not just killed, they were tortured to death. Another issue related to the Red Terror is the composition of those bodies that made up the Emergency Commission. As the Bolsheviks themselves analyzed, a huge part of the representatives of these bodies that carried out the Red Terror and had a revolutionary sense of justice were representatives of the criminal world. There were criminals, people of marginal fates, who had sadistic inclinations and enjoyed the fact that they wielded power. They considered themselves to be people who were entitled to decide the destinies of other human beings. The Jewish massacres in Ukraine which were committed by Red Guards were a common occurrence. With regard to the Red Terror meted out to national minorities, we can talk about the pogroms that Bolshevik units committed against the Jews. For example, that part of the 1st Cavalry Army, which was headed by Budonny. These pogroms were then attributed to representatives of Pitlura's forces and representatives of the Ukrainian army. Famous Ukrainian figures became the victims of the Bolshevik Red Terror of that time. Director of the Ukrainian Academy of Arts Alexander Murashko, writer Dmitro Markovich, poet Rihori Chuprinka, composer Mykola Leontovich, and many others. If we analyze the number of victims of the Red Terror, then some researchers give a figure of 1,300,000 victims at the hands of the Bolsheviks. And this is only a selection that was carried out during the revolution of 1917 to 1921, that is for the entire Russian Empire. In Ukraine, the number is slightly smaller. The Bolshevik Red Terror in Ukraine, which began in 1917, was of a tragic and catastrophic scale. Because during the national liberation struggle of 1917 to 1920, Ukrainians felt managed to get a feel of what independence was. Step by step, this idea was nurtured among the elite and began to spread among the population. But this didn't suit the new masters of the Kremlin. For almost four decades, Bolshevism tried tirelessly, through various repressive means, to erase this idea from the consciousness of Ukrainians.